it's Isaac from Hunger Smash Fitness and today I just wanted to talk to you for a little bit about the importance of salt in your diet, um, specifically potassium. I feel like potassium is one of the ones that oftentimes gets forgotten. Usually when we talk about salt we end up talking about sodium. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about potassium a little bit and kind of some of the benefits, some of the things you got to watch out for about it as well. But yeah, so that's what this video will be about. So first I wanted to talk about iodine with salt, um, salt in general, so this isn't necessarily about potassium, but this is just about regular salt. Um, this is one of the reasons why I like to use iodized table salt, and if you're not using iodized table salt, um, or if you're sodium deficient by, any, by uh, for some reason, then I would suggest getting um, iodine in the liquid form and then just putting like three drops in, your, in, a, in a drink in the morning. Um, and of course, this is, uh, I, I am just a face on a screen. Again, I am not your doctor or something like that. If you actually are deficient, I would say go to the doctor and talk to them about it. Um, but this is something that you can consider because iodine, um, it's in salt. And so if you're sodium deficient, oftentimes you will be iodine deficient. And that's very important because iodine is vital in the manufacturing of the thyroid hormone. Um, and the thyroid hormone um, it has well, it has a bunch of different functions. We won't go into all of that necessarily. But um, if you're if you're deficient in the thyroid hormone, then y it, you can oftentimes en end up with an enlarged thyroid um, or a, a goiter or hypothyroidism. So that is something that you want to be um, just aware of is uh, your iodine intake. So another thing that salt does in general is it helps maintain hydration. Um, so it's actually going to help us retain water in our body, um, but it's also just going to help us control our our fluid level. So um, salt is a key component in triggering when we feel thirsty and such like that. So it can help it can help our body regulate its um, its hydration level more effectively. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So, so these next two, I feel like really go hand in hand. Um, it helps your nerves because it, it helps conduct electricity through through your body. So it helps helps your nervous system. Salt does that in general, but also potassium really helps with um, helps promote muscular function. So your muscles fire using well. So part of the process is a sodium potassium pump. Okay, so it's it's a two sodium to three potassium and via the exchange it creates um, ADP. So this is going to, it, it's a part of the process of getting your muscles to fire properly. And so that's one of the, one of the um, primary functions of potassium, especially in an athlete or in, um, but even, even in daily use, um, it's, it's part of the primary function of potassium is to make you function properly. So you don't necessarily have to be an athlete because even going grocery shopping, you're still using your muscles. Even, even sitting on the couch, you're, st you're still using your muscles to an extent. And so having the proper ratio of potassium and sodium is going to make those muscle contractions a lot better, a lot smoother, um, and, and that is going to be a pri that's going to be a key component in preventing um, muscle cramps and, and uh, similar issues. Um, of course, there are a lot of other things that can cause muscle cramps. Potassium is not the only, it's not the only component that is going to affect that. And again, if you have an actual medical issue, don't don't just watch this video. Go go talk to your doctor, okay? And and um, because to get it to get everything played out, you really want to get all of your blood work done and everything else. And so it's it's not going to be just you know try this and you're fixed. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Now lowering your blood pressure is kind of an interesting one because. Potassium is not going to be the key player in that. Um, sodium, potassium is not um, going to be the key player. So a lot of times, what will happen is if you have really high blood pressure, the you know the doctor will advise you to reduce your salt intake. But it can. There's a lot of factors that can influence high blood pressure. And again, 
talk to your doctor to get blood work done and everything else. Um, but there's, there's a lot of factors that can influence blood pressure. Um, part of that can be, like I said, via the sodium potassium pump. Because if you have excess sodium in your diet and you don't have enough potassium, it can cause an imbalance. And so the, um, the pressure inside the cell versus outside the cell will be different. And so it, your, your blood will flow. So your body will, will find that balance. If you're low on potassium, which is inside the cell, and you're high on sodium, which is outside the cell, there's going to be a, a pressure shift to outside the cell, which is going to raise your total blood volume. Okay, so so there can be a lot of there can be instances like that where it can it can change your blood pressure. Um, but again, sodium and potassium are not the only factors in this. Um, fault, uh, fats, protein. Um, yeah, fiber, calcium, there's a lot of other factors that can play into blood pressure as well as exercise. If you're just sitting around all day long, it's going to be very, very different than if you are getting, if you are exercising daily. So again, um, I would really encourage you if you have blood, you know, high blood pressure and everything, then yeah, get some exercise. Um, but again, talk to the doctor, get your blood work done, find out what all your levels of everything are and get their advice on what you need to do to, ch to change that, to correct that. Um, yeah, so again, potassium, it does have a large part to play. I, say, I, would, I would think a larger part than a lot of people give it credit for, but it's not the end all be all in blood pressure. So these are some of the foods that have the highest um, amount of potassium in them. Um, and as you can see, it's all in per 100 grams, so it's really not that large of a serving. Um, B greens is some of the highest with 909 milligrams. Um, I feel like most people, when you say potassium, everyone thinks bananas. And bananas actually aren't that high. They're only at 358 milligrams. Um, so they're pretty low. There's a lot of avocados higher, potatoes are higher. Potatoes you wanna be a little bit careful with just because there's so much starch in them as well. So I think um, sweet potatoes or yams are a much better option than just regular uh, white potatoes um, or, you know, or whatever. Anyways, we're not gonna get into all the different types of potatoes. But anyways, um, I think sweet potatoes are probably a better option for you, um, but, yeah, it's it, all based off of your diet and everything. Um, salmon is pretty high in potassium. A lot of the ones that I, I think are really good just throughout your day. Um, plain yogurt has, I think it's like 155 um, milligrams per 100 grams of yogurt. But I don't know anyone that only eats 100 grams of yogurt. Usually they eat you know a cup or something like that. And that's got, I think it's up to 360, 370 milligrams, um, which is about the same as a banana, but you end, you end up getting a lot of other health benefits from the yogurt. And so you're also getting a lot of the, pota uh, the calcium and, and uh, protein and everything else from the yogurt. And so I feel like yogurt is a much better option. Um, or coconut juice. Um, I'm not going to call it coconut milk, um, but coconut juice, a lot of the um, actual juices with pulp and everything else, they'll have 500 milligrams sometimes in just that one can or one bottle of juice. And then it has a lot of other good nutrients in it as well. So there's a lot of really good options for where you can get potassium. And so if you're, if you're struggling with a lot of these muscle cramps and everything else, um, spinach, kale, beet greens, all these things, they're really high in this potassium and it's really easy um, to, to add this to your diet to get the necessary, necessary potassium. So anyways, that's just a couple ideas. I hope this really helps. Um, again, as I've said before, I, I am, I'm just a face on a screen. I mean, I have a, I'm a licensed physical therapy assistant, um, and I, I love to research this stuff. I spend a lot of my free time just looking up things, um, anything. I love to just, I, I love to just learn about 
whatever. So if you have any articles that you think are interesting, if you have um, anything that you think you'd like to see a future video on, let me know. I'll I'll do some research, and I would love to I would love to let you know what I think. Um, as always, there's lots of research about all of this, and sometimes the research supports one side, sometimes it supports the other side. Um, research is fickle because based off of what they're doing the research to, if it's, if it's mouse studies or something like that, it doesn't necessarily apply to humans. Um, so be careful what you're, with the research article, try and find out what they're doing the research on and whether that actually translates to you or not. Um, but anyways, that's a whole that's a whole other video. We won't go into that. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully it gives you some good ideas. I hope you can really take a lot of this and add it to your diet. And uh, I hope you see some good benefits from it. So anyways, that is all for today. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is Hunger Smash's video on potassium. And just remember, always improve that 1%.